Well, greetings, brother, and welcome to Sabbath services. When you look at all the disasters that have happened down there along the Florida Panhandle, gives you a good idea what will happen when things really come apart. No gas, no water. If you have a cell phone, you may be lucky, but no place to charge it up. Okay. And you're in terrible shape. They showed the lines of people coming to Walmart to try and get the gas, and it was a couple of miles long. Well, I, I as I saw that, I said, how many are going to run out of gas in line? What's going to happen with that? And then the guy behind him is going to get mad because in line, and he's going to run out of gas, and you know. You put about five or six days like that, and you're going to have a lot of fighting. A lot of fighting. I also saw a very interesting thing on news. Alan Dershowitz says that if they come up to, to put their face in, in your face, you can charge them for assault. Because everyone is granted by law five feet around them. And if they spit on you, you can take them to court. Okay. So that's what they need to do. But I, I know it's going to happen. If, if, like up in Oregon, it's bound to happen. They stop the highway like that, someone's going to get a gun and come out and start shooting them. And that's precisely what they want. Well, let's see the prophecy of all of this. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And it all lies at the feet of the pulpit because they say that Jesus did away with the law. So here's the result of it. Verse 14. Okay. No, that's preaching the gospel. Verse 12. And because lawlessness shall be multiplied. That's what's happening. Matthew 24, verse 12. Lawlessness shall be multiplied. And you saw in the news, didn't you? that witches are holding covens to put hexes on Justice Kavanaugh. So there's a whole lot to pray for. You know, we are told in First Timothy to pray for the rulers, pray for the governors, those that run the civil government. And Romans 13, those who run it, they have the swords and the guns and things like this because God gave them that authority. And you can see what happens when you don't have law. Everything comes apart. And a lot of this is, you look at the young ones coming up now, if you spank your child because they've done something wrong, you can be arrested and put in jail. See? So now you have a whole bunch of 20-year-olds who are really only seven. And that's where we are. There it is right there. Multiplied. And you see it, you see it even on the ads on television. You go back and think about the ads maybe even three or four years ago. But now they're getting more risque as it comes down the line. Okay. So we'll have to just wait and see what's going to happen here. But there's one thing for sure, that we have to have the faith of Christ and 
one statement that Paul made that he was afraid that Satan would come along and take people away from the simplicity in Christ. Well, let's look at the simplicity in Christ. It's not the stupidity of the Protestants. That's not simplicity. Simplicity means that it is direct. Simplicity means it's not complicated with rote. Simplicity means that it involves your choice of doing what God has said. And it comes down to faith, hope, and love. So let's look at what we need to do because we have to walk in God's way. So let's come back here to to um, let's come back here to Psalm 119. 119. And I don't think there's any way anyone can ever get through Psalm 119 many, many times and still understand all that's in here. This is a fantastic psalm. Okay, verse 15. I will meditate on your precepts. Now doesn't this tie in with what psalm? Psalm 1. Meditate in the law of God day and night. See? I will meditate upon your precepts and have respect to your ways. Now, we've been called to the way of God. A way of life. That's why true Christianity is not a religion. It is a way of living by the laws and commandments of God. Okay, since we're here in, in the Psalms, Let's come back to Psalm 37. Psalm 37 and verse 5. Psalm 37 and verse 5. <clears throat> you have your way that must conform to God's way. And that is the choice that we have to make. So here in Psalm 37 in verse 5 it says, commit your way to the Lord. Meaning that you're going to walk in God's way. Trust in him and trust and faith are synonyms. They work together. And he will bring it to pass. So God is there to help. God is there to intervene. Now we're going to have trials. We have to go through. That's for sure. But God will see us through them all. Okay. Now since we're here in the Psalms. Let's come back here to Psalm 27. 27. And verse 11. This is interesting because they work together. Okay. Verse 11, Psalm 37 says, Teach me your way, O Lord. And how are we taught? Through the word of God. Okay. And lead me in a level path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies. Now this is also a prophecy of Christ. See, For false witnesses have risen up against me, and he breathes out violence. Okay, Then it comes down here to, let's finish the next couple verses. I would have fainted unless I had believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So in the final analysis, keep your mind on God. Okay, Wait for the Lord. Be of good courage. Isn't that what Jesus said? Be of good courage. I've overcome the world. And then what else did he say in the next breath? He said, in the world you'll have tribulation, but I'm with you. Okay. 
and he will make your heart strong. Yea, wait, I say, wait on the Lord. Now this is all connected with the simplicity of Christ. Okay, All of this connected with faith. Now let, let's look at another one. Okay, Psalm 86. There we go. Psalm 86 and verse 11. So here it is again. Teach me your way, O Lord. Now this is why when you study the Bible, say a short prayer, O Lord, teach me your will. Okay. And the whole Bible is here for us to learn from everything that is here. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forevermore. Great is your mercy toward me, and we need lots of mercy. Okay? And you have delivered my soul from the depths of the grave. So, looking forward to the resurrection. All right. Now, in the book of Proverbs, here it is in chapter 8, where wisdom is calling out, and wisdom comes from God. Okay? Psalm 8, okay, verse 32. Now therefore, hearken or listen to me, O you children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man, and also woman, who hears me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whosoever finds me finds life and shall obtain favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul, and all who hate me love death. So we have to have the way of God as our way of living. Now, let's look at some other things. How does the simplicity of Christ begin? We know, repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Spirit of God. And then it's constantly keeping the commandments of God, studying the Word of God, praying to God, because all of those things build the faith that we need. Okay? So, Let's come to Romans, the second chapter. Romans 2. Now, this is also quoted in the Old Testament. I'm, I'm going to uh, do some church at home on why the Catholic Church went wrong. And one of them was, the main one, was accepting Peter as the first pope and assuming that they had the power that anything that you... Do, you bind or loose, God is bound to do it. Okay? And that's how it entirely got off the road. Okay? Because it doesn't mean that. Might even bring a sermon on it, too. Okay. Okay. Let's pick it up here in verse 16. Romans, the first chapter, Romans 1 and verse 16. Okay. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Now, belief and faith, one is the verb, one is the substance. Okay. To believe means to have faith. Exercising that faith is believing. So it's kind of both together. Okay. 
both to the Jew first and to the Greek. And we find over here in chapter 2, God is no respecter of persons. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Now what does that mean? Remember when Jesus healed different ones, he said, you're healed according to your faith. Okay? So we have faith. Two faiths. Our faith to God and God's faith back to us. Kind of in a circular thing. This is why we have prayer and study daily. This is why we have the Sabbath. Now think about it for a minute. The people that you have known who've been in a church who have quit. Okay. They may not be atheists, but what do they really know? Because if you don't approach everything of God, His way, that's why we start out with His way and we're to walk in His way, okay, then we're not going to succeed in being what God wants us to be. So that's why the Sabbath is so important. I don't know about you, but I think that all of us need the Sabbath every single week. And in the cases we don't come to church, we need to keep it at home and use that time for extra study and extra prayer and things like that. But if you go along and don't study and don't pray, pretty soon what? It fades, right? So it is from faith unto faith. And notice, according as it is written, the just. Now the just are those who are in right standing with God. Okay? The unjust are those in the world who, whatever their behavior may be, are not in good standing with God. The just shall live by faith. That's what God wants us to live by. Okay? Now, let's come back here to Hebrews 11. Okay? Hebrews 11. So we can put down there, number one, Walk in his way by faith. Okay? Walk by faith. Hebrews 11. Now Hebrews 11 is also called the faith chapter. But when you study it, you will see something really, really important. What happens when you have faith and you believe? You act upon that faith and you act upon that belief, correct? Yes. Now also, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. We'll look at that in just a minute. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So we have faith, hope, and love, and we'll look at all three today. And the conviction of things not seen. Now why? Because God, who never lies, and his word is always true. Even though you can't see it, God has said it is so. Okay. Now people say, well, how can that be? Well... I've used the example how many times with the law of gravity. Okay. You go to bed at night and you set the alarm clock and you wake up in the morning and at such such a time you get up, such and such a time, depending on what part of the year it is, the sun comes up. And in the evening, the sun goes down. Okay. God said it that way. All right. The conviction of the things not seen. 
Same way with prayer. Okay. For by this kind of faith, the elders obtained a good report. By faith, we understand that the worlds were created by the word of God. Now, you know what the latest they're trying to do now? Take microbes from the earth, put them in spaceships, send them out to some planet or moon somewhere, some, and dump them on there, and start evolution all over again. See? Okay. And they do that because they have no belief in God. And they think they're smart enough to do it. Well, if everyone thinks they're smarter than God, they just need to look at the latest hurricane. Okay, can you stand that? Can you go against that? Okay. However, little sidebar on hurricanes and living on the Gulf Coast, they showed a picture of a house still standing after a hurricane. Everything else around it was flat. This house was not affected by the 100 mile an hour winds because it was made out of reinforced concrete. So it might be a wise thing if they made that part of the building code. Then they wouldn't have all the houses destroyed. And, <laughs> and you could have faith that the house would stand. You know, then you have, have the uh, analogy that Jesus did about building on a rock, building on the sand. Look at all those houses built on the sand. Now Ken lives in Sand City and oh, they love to build there. They just pack down the sand, put in the the trenches for the foundation, voila, up comes the house. Okay. All right, come down here <clears throat> to verse 6. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Remember the two faiths, your faith and God's faith together, from faith to faith. For it is mandatory for the one who comes to God to believe that he exists, and this also means is in everything that he claims himself to be. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. All right? Let's look at the kind of faith that we are to have. Let's first of all come to Galatians. The fifth chapter. All right. Galatians 5. Let's notice the attributes that God gives to us. Okay. These are the spiritual attributes. Galatians 5.22. Now just above it are all the works of the flesh. Or, you could say, human nature and Satan leading them. Okay. Verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, the Spirit is called what? In the Gospel of John. The Spirit of the truth. Right? Yes. But the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faith. And this faith comes from God. And that is called strengthening your faith. From your faith to God's faith to your faith to God's faith from your faith to God's faith. Okay? Meekness, self-control against such there is no law. Now let's come to Mark 11 and see what Jesus said. Mark 11. 
Now this is interesting because it's very difficult to translate it straight out because a person reading the Bible the first time would not understand it because they don't have any faith. Okay. Mark 11. Okay. And this is after he cursed the fig tree. Verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Look, Master, the fig tree that you cursed has dried up. Verse 22. And Jesus answered and said to him, or said to them, Have faith from God. That is literal, have God's faith. Now, you can't have God's faith yourself. It must be given to you by the Spirit of God. That's the only way you're going to have faith. So I translated it, have faith from God who gives his faith. Okay. So let's see what that does for us. Okay. Let's put some other scriptures together and put this under the, the title, Walk by Faith. Okay, so let's come to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians 2. Now many of these things we have gone over before. But whenever there is a sermon to give, there will be some things old, some things new, some things repeated, some things we already know, but all of these things reinforce our belief and our faith and our understanding in the Word of God. Okay. Okay, he shows that we've all been been called out of this world and the verses 1 through 3, but verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Now it's hard for people to understand the love of God and also understand the anger of God. To understand the love of God and see the destruction of people that apparently are innocent. They can't put the two together. Well, the problem is they don't know about the holy days. Okay? Because the greatest secret of God is the second resurrection. Greatest secret. The world doesn't understand it because... It's split in two parts. Old Testament. So the Jews who reject the New Testament don't understand the book of Revelation, which has the second part. The rest of the dead do not live again until the thousand years are finished. So the Protestants, they have the New Testament, but they don't read the Old Testament so they don't know how it's put together with the other scriptures because you need two. See? That's how it works out. Now, if you make cupcakes and don't put in the, the baking powder, you're going to have flat cakes. Same way here. You must have God's way. Now notice how God's working in our lives. Because in each one of us, I know, I know I can, I'm sure you can, remember when God intervened in your life. And how did that happen that it was to you 
and not someone right next to you. Because it's a spiritual thing that God does. Okay? Even when we were dead in our sins, or in our trespasses rather, he made us alive together with Christ, for you have been saved by grace. Now, make you alive, repentance, baptism, receive the Holy Spirit. That's all contained in there. Okay? For you have been saved by grace. Now remember, God does not give grace for people to continue in sin. He doesn't do it. Okay. Now notice the ultimate goal. Verse 6. And he has raised us up together and has caused us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And you can say, well, I'm sitting here in this chair. How can this be a heavenly place? Okay. Hold on. Next verse explains it. So that in the ages that are coming, that's when you will sit in the heavenly places at the resurrection. In the ages that are coming. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Now that's an amazing thing. Now you go back and you think about John the Baptist, the way he was born, his ministry, his baptism, and everything. And how did he die? Put in prison? And then with a terrible dance by Herodias, the king, while well, Herodias went to her mother and said, the king has said that he will give me anything. What do you think I should ask? She said, the head of John the Baptist. Okay. <laughs> so she went out and said the head of John the Baptist. Bang. He's dead. Now what did Christ say of him? What did Christ say of John the Baptist? Among those born of men, there has not arisen a greater one than John the Baptist and the least one in the kingdom of God is greater than him. Now think on that. Okay. So you talk about grace and exceeding riches. That's an amazing thing to think about, isn't it? Hmm? Okay. Sometimes you get discouraged and get down, you know, and when, when you get older, you slow down mentally, spiritually, it's tougher, physically, it's harder. Okay. And it, when that happens, always remember Isaiah. All flesh is like grass, and the flower of the field. It has its prime, and then it withers and falls. So there we are. Okay? And the only one to overcome death was Jesus Christ. That's our hope. Okay? Now continuing here. Verse 8. For by grace you have been saved. Now that's from Satan the devil uh, and those things up in verse 1 and 2. And this especially is not of yourselves. See? The saving or the faith. It is the gift of God. And the simplicity in Christ is not by works. You have to keep the commandments of God. That's the way we live. Not by works. Religion by work is, famous one, is rosaries. Okay? It's the other way around. You think about your works, and you think about yourself, but notice what God is doing, verse 10. 
for we, all of us, see, are his workmanship created or being created in Christ Jesus. Now, what is the end goal of that? Think of a scripture, Philippians 3.20, that we will have an immortal body like his, glorious body, okay? Now, Ephesians 2, verse 10, unto the good works that God ordained beforehand in order that we might walk in them. Walk in that faith. Okay. So we are being made into the brothers and sisters of Christ. Okay. Now how is that accomplished? Since we're here, go back just a few pages to 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. You know, isn't it interesting in the Bible, you go along, hear all these other verses, and then right in the middle of it, there's a phrase or a short verse. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And that means we walk by faith which is spiritual, not by what we see or think just for ourselves, see, but by faith. Okay, now let's come back here to back a little further to First John, the first chapter. Remember, that's the other way in the faithful version. Okay, now this is one thing that is very helpful if you have a tough day a terrible problem, you know, whatever it may be. And you have those. I've had those. Everybody has. Okay? So keep this in mind. Okay? Verse 3, 1 John, the first chapter, verse 3. For that which we've seen and heard we are reporting to you in order that you may have fellowship with us for the fellowship. That's what it is in the Greek. The fellowship. Indeed, our fellowship that is collectively all together is with the Father and with his own Son, Jesus Christ. Okay? So that's how all of this works together that we can walk by faith. Okay? Now, let's see if there's another one or two here for us. Okay, Second John, verse 6. Second John, verse 6. Okay. Verse 6. And this is the love of God that we walk according to his commandments. Now how about that? Think of that's a perfect verse if you're talking to a Protestant who believes in the New Testament. Isn't it? Uh huh. Because they say, well, if you keep the commandments, you are trying to earn your own salvation by your own works. No, that's not true, see? This is the love of God. You believe in the love of God? He probably say, well, yes, I believe in the love of God. Do you love God? Yes, indeed. Oh, let's read on. That we walk according to his commandments. Is that how you live your life? Why, no, I don't need to. Why, we can keep Sunday. Oh, really? You know how that came about? You ever read the history how Sunday came about? Do you think Jesus authorized that? No, indeed. You ought to read history. It says that Constantine, a pagan Roman emperor, put out the edict that all Christians will keep Sunday, not Sabbath. They will not Judaize. Well, now you got them. Okay. Now notice, here's an overarching commandment, including all of this together, continuing. This is the commandment exactly as you have heard from the beginning, 
that you might walk in it. Walk in the way of God. How? Okay. Come back here to 1 John, the second chapter. All right, let's pick it up here in, oh, we'll just go to verse 3, because this makes the point. Verse 3, and by this standard we know that we know him. If, notice who the condition is upon us, we keep his commandments. The one who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Now, out in the world, he may be kind of a, a nice man or a nice woman. But they just don't know God. That's all. God hasn't called them. So their time will come. Verse 5, on the other hand, if anyone is keeping his word. Now that's quite a thing, isn't it? That, remember what Jesus said? We'll cover that in a little bit. Okay. His word. That's all the teachings of Christ. That's all the teachings of the Old Testament that relate to the things concerning eternal life and prophecy that comes down to our days. The only thing that has been set aside has been all of the ritual at the temple, the animal sacrifices, and the washings and oblations that they had there. All of that has been set aside because now we have a higher, newer standard, which is direct contact with God the Father and Jesus Christ. Okay? Is keeping his word. Truly in this one, the love of God is being perfected. Okay? And by this means, we know we are in him. Anyone who claims to dwell in him, another good verse, is obligating himself also to walk even as he himself walked. Now the only way we can do that is how? Christ in us. Alright, let's go ahead and take a break and we'll come back and finish. Mm -hmm. 